Hello guys, this is Slavik and welcome back to my Aragon campaign, of course already France, where my goal is to reach 1 million income. As you can see, the year is 1673, so we passed half of our timeline to achieve the goal. As you can see, we control most of the world, almost 8000 development here, our income is 700, so we are on a good way to achieve what we want, and we could boost it farther more any second. But, uh, for example, I don't want to waste Diplo points on that. Furthermore, uh, I don't uh, want to take trade guy here. I think I'm going to change this guy for Diplo rep because it's slowly time to start annexing my vassals. Probably I'll start annexing Persia and maybe even Lithuania, so both of them at once. Those are huge vassals and I need to slowly get rid of them. Next step in my buildings in the trade companies is to get the buildings for trade steering of course, for now it will not change that much, but it might be, if I build it in every node here, it might be even up to 100 more ducats at this point and way more in the late game. Also, as I finally have some money, I'm going to build up, maybe not even level 6, but level 4 forts uh, on my borders. So, in my war against Europeans, against Germany, they'll be not constantly sitting down my mainland. I have money for that. Finally, with 22nd admin idea picked, this the next one will be really interesting, but it's a little bit too early for that. I'm going to pick defensive. Why is that? I'm not the biggest fan of this idea group, but it gives a policy of trade ideas for 25% trade steering, which will be key in a late game for us. So you need to pick it already, and uh, because the other options I have will be plutocratic, which is not uh, unlocked yet, uh, it will be economic. And it will be expansion. As I'm um, still expanding a lot, I'm not uh, going to spend army points on these ideas. So start with defensive. To get a trade power from each trade company that they have, I started building clever free trade centers because you can see it's also helping with naval tradition, which is increasing trade steering. So this is the first thing. A second thing, we have already unlocked stock exchanges. So I'm building those uh, beauties in every note when I'm lacking some trade power here we just need more provinces for uh, for the company but as you can see it's already on 38% and we will break it to even higher level look that I got trolled by Delhi I cannot take anything for myself I'll just feed my war as fast as much as possible but the cost for this princess will be higher because I'm sure they don't have 45 admin efficiency I'm actually able to fully annex Delhi everything for Mewar and uh, let's look yeah, this is going to be a plenty of rebels here, but it's not a problem. And also I'm going to fully annex Ethiopia, but this time I'm going to take all the provinces for myself, which is just 57 of uh, overextension. Just wait a day, peasant out, beautiful, getting to 10,000 slowly, core all, still some governing capacity, and you can see I have plenty of diplo points. I don't want to pay 800 for this. And I was thinking that Persia might not be the best idea to annex them right now because they are constantly uh, being occupied by any enemies from over here. So this will be uh, slowed down all the time. Uh, I will start annexing Lithuania. Oh, just uh, I'm going to influence them. And we need to wait a little bit. Now the integration, as you can see, will take some time. Uh, but keep in mind, my uh, diplomatic reputation is decreased by uh, the fact that I annex my subjects. Not so long ago, so it might even end right now if we go over a month. No, it needs a little bit more time. Yes, there it goes. And right now, if we go and look over on Lithuania, you will see that we are spending that we are spending uh, seven points monthly, and with that, it will take like forty years, which is not bad. And remember that we still should get a plenty of trade good, which is called ivory. With ivory, I'm surely be able to do that even faster and uh, it's still nine months monthly. So I could also annex Poland at the same time. How's the point? I'm still earning points with annexing those two at the same time. I'm going to do so. Of course, Poland will be finished earlier, uh, but it's all good. It's all good. I need to speed up taking care of my vassals. This is probably going to hurt me a lot, but yeah, let's do this. You can see India is even more beautiful right now. 
and theoretically I should be pissing out Pope in a second, but this will be another 70% for all of my claims. So I'm thinking about just waiting with that. Uh, I could also pick this already, but I'll wait a little bit more. I'm not going to pay a plus uh, six years ahead. No, 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 that's a little bit too quick. There are two things that I've been waiting for. One of them is conscription center, so I can update all of my level one buildings and I'm already starting doing so to increase my force limit, uh, which is already 249. So we will be able to build a new stack in a second. And another building is town halls. This is going to hurt me. I'm going to piss out Pope because Sweden is occupying California and my integration is not processing. Maybe I'll even break the relations with Sweden? Yes, okay. And all of my claims. Now, my overextension is almost 200. Well, uh, I definitely need to get an advisor for unrest, but the one that I can get to level 5. Ah. Oh. Okay, and as soon as I core promises from Vijay, I'm going to piss out Bengal and it's time to rush my border with Mink. I'm still being a lot of town holes, but as you can see, I was over the limit a second ago and I decreased that by 200 and I'm going to build that furthermore also in my not stated provinces because, because I can with this income simply. I have a massive amount of bonuses to the tech cost as you can see. And yeah, I'm going to take this because it's another 10% of admin efficiency, alright. So our next one is covering capacity. And uh, this was supposed to be 99 over extension, but it will be 84. There's only 281 admin points, so in a few months I'll be able to call all of those. Now it's time to slowly move farther into Europe, so I'm going to attack Bohemia and I will feed uh, then, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give Poland uh, provinces of Bohemia because they have a couple of claims on Silesia. And in the meantime, I'm getting ready to attack Ava, and I think Ava still doesn't have uh, a border of me because they're not a tributary. And probably next step will be to get ready for the Mink. Remember, they have probably around 400,000 provinces, as I remember. Yeah, and the army quality, if we check it. It should be, yeah, ours is way better, but they have a lot of discipline. This would be problematic, but yeah, the morale difference is nice. So uh, that's a huge chance for, for nice stack wipes. Now, from the wall with Bohemia, as mentioned, Silesia for Poland and a few provinces for myself. You can see that's 54% of our extension. Uh, and allies has us to break. I don't think so. It's uh, only Saxony, but they can keep Saxony because Saxony might be eaten by Prussia otherwise. So get it. It's beautiful. Uh, start coring it, we will still be over 100 of our extension. Look at how we drop governing capacity in the meantime by the buildings. Now we have two major wars. One is against Mawa, in which all of those provinces are going to Mewar, and also two for myself. And third one is against Kaffa, but Kaffa is protected by Maravi. Maravi seems like an innocent country, but they are fourth great power. And they brought, uh, right now it's less, but they brought at the start 100,000 troops. So I have some problems with my 60,000, but we're going to beat them in a second. We have an amazing situation here to take a few stack wipes. First of all, those guys will be attacking us in the mountains. Uh, some useless rebels, I will have to take care of them later. But look, I'm getting attacked by one of the stacks from Kaffa. It's a stack wipe. Now I can go after a second one, even though it's the mountains. I should be still able to kill them over here. Mm, not sure if this stack wipe would depend on the rolls. I lost on the sea. But yes, yeah, stack wipe is another stack of Kaffa of actually Maravi. Right now they don't have that much. So I can split, turn off the force march, and go straight on capital of Maravi uh, while you're going to defend this fort. Right now I'm just going to wipe his Moravi and fully annex Kaffa. I didn't even have to go to the capital, they're just exhausted by me constantly stack wiping them. Uh, so you can go home right now and from Kaffa we are going to take, as mentioned, the full annexation, which should probably end me up in again, yeah, over 100 of extension. It's already on 69, yeah, it will be slightly more than 100. It's okay. Whew. What is our development? It's 9.1 thousand, so I think we are on a good way to our goal of getting into the new century with 10,000 great power score. Of course, my vassals are under 2,000, so in fact we have more development. And remember, 
and uh, that all of those boys are also mine so this is uh, in fact better than it shows and uh, yeah next step probably to go and get border with Mink because India is practically finished Middle East is finished we are getting into Africa not much left from Europe New World is great uh, just I would say Central and uh, West Africa are pretty empty for us and uh, this part of Central Asia and of course whole East Asia. I'm going to start annexing another subject so the choice is Poland, Lithuania, Persia or Mewar. I will start with Mewar uh, probably they will be constantly being uh, occupied by someone so they will be slowed down but still it's also 5 uh, monthly, 17, 15 so it's 17, 26, uh, 15, 12. So those two should, uh, should, uh, should be annexed around the same time and this one a little bit later. Now I can piss out Eva. I'm not going to take much from them. Uh, mainly border of Mongnao. So then declare uh, in prize for Ming and on Mongnao so I'll be able to collect my lands. And I will start the process of destruction of Ming. Should not be easy, believe me. Um, but first yeah, let's choose some cool provinces here. 91 over extension. Maybe let's not go so much over it and break the relations uh, most importantly with Oirat. Okay. Now, I have also worked Orisa, from which I would like to fully annex them. It's 38, so it'll be slightly over 100 if I get everything. But I need to get rid of, uh, of Vijay out of this war first. Honestly, I'm scared war with Ming. Uh, let's just peace out Orisa first. Start coring everything right here. I'm 14. Because Ming, as I showed you a second ago, has an enormous amount of my troops. Same as me. At least no manpower. That might be something we might use. And army quality is also on our advantage. Uh, but I can't bring all of my troops here, right? I have a huge empire to manage. So I'm going to bring one, two, three. Four stacks here. Time to do this, so I'm going to bring those four stacks as promised. Uh, I'll be. Oh my freaking. Mm. Okay, I guess uh, you're going to quickly take care of that and go back. And you're going already good to go into Mink. Because I'm going to go with two stacks with 60k. Of course, our combat with is 36, so that would be the best amount of the artillery that we should go with. But uh, it's uh, not this part of the game for me to, like, myself to allow that look on this force limit. Force limit is a problem because we don't have quantity ideas and we won't be using quantity ideas. So let's declare the war, thanks that we have uh, good power projection, and let's go inside Mink. Goal is to destroy the mandate and bring thousands of millions of rebels into the country. Of course, as I started the war with Ming, this coalition that started forming against myself, uh, but most probably the second I finish with Ming and I destroy them, coalition will lose all because it's a couple of nations here in Great Britain and that's it. This is my first battle against Ming and I got attacked in my mountain fort. So the final minus three and no leader and uh, I don't think I'll be able to stack by that. Yeah, I don't have enough of damage to kill enough of troops, but still this is beautiful. But of course, not much of the war score because uh, the war goal is to take Beijing. So my goal with the sieges will be to go as fast as possible to Beijing. And good thing is that even though they are probably extremely rich, they have only level two forts. Look what I found. Uh, one stack, not to you. Uh, one stack of 20,000 going around without a leader into my mountain fort. Free war score, of course not much of it, uh, but maybe if you play it right they'll start making some loans because as you can remember, they don't have any manpower and they already have more troops than them. And they have almost, uh, they almost siege down Yunnan already, so I should go and try fighting them, but as you can see I'm highly outnumbered. This is pretty close for me to win, but they are reinforcing with another 40,000 troops. And I'm simply getting outnumbered. Maybe with good rolls, I'll have a chance of winning that. But look, I roll like complete shit in this battle. And you have to run away out of that. With Wuxiang uh, being sieged down, I'm going straight for the capital. So Beijing, so it will give me first of all the war score and second of all more devastation and we will be getting, oh my god, they have 20 
7,000 ducats in the pocket. I, I wanted to get them into bankruptcy, but it's not possible. My truce with Moravi is ending in a second. So just uh, deal with those troubles. Just uh, so be not having them during the war. I should use situations like this. They, are, they have 200,000 troops here, but they are splitting them into different directions. So I'm just go and stack wipe these 20k troops. Now I have Beijing and another fort on the north. And uh, we'll be getting more devastation into them. I just need to go back uh, to Wuxian. With everything siege down on this part of China, I'm starting to carpet siege them. And uh, to increase this devastation because we need a get better numbers to, to be efficient. And I also can start the war with Moravi. I'm ready to do so. I'm going to get two stacks. One is going to the capital and the other one is going to the only fort. My car position is reaching South and China right now as well. And the mandate finally started dropping. And they don't have that many troops left. In my peace deal with Moravia, I want to first of all all of the trade centers to put my trade company here. And of course, I need to connect my lands and take the ivory provinces. Because we need ivory to get diplomatic reputation of it. Time to peace them out. This is my piece. And I'm going to add all of these provinces uh, to the trade company. Of course, the trade centers. I'm already out of diplo points. Which hurts me. You can see I'm uh, annexing uh, three of the vassals. But I'm still getting 14 points monthly. So two of these vassals keep being annexed and the third one is stuck. With everything occupied here, it's time to go and stack by the last stacks of China and the mandate is dropping quicker and quicker. Now this is going to be a stack wipe on the one stack and the second stack is still alive around here in Shenyang. So I'm going to attack them as well. They run away to Korea but I've got them here, that's a stack wipe and they're out of any troops. Zero troops and full occupation. Maybe except Hainan, but they are having ships there, so it doesn't matter. Ming, of course, cannot protect the tributary states. I'm going to attack Mung Mao to connect my lands with the future Ming conquests. There comes the rebels. Tons of them, and this will be strongly increasing, and uh, of course, I want them to enforce the demands, but uh, with my uh, raising word exhaustion, I'll piece them out in a second. I just need to get some Lithuania passive so they will not fight with the rebels. Okay, this is my peace deal. It doesn't look beautiful, but it's it kinda beautiful. I'm closing some of the trains inside my country, especially with the rebels. And I'm also getting two provinces of Wu, which will be my vassal, which I'm going to release in a second and feed them with part of these provinces. Because of course I cannot stand 250 over extension. And right now, as I gave him as much as I could, it's 175. Still hurts me, but we'll have to deal with that somehow. Okay, guys, I think that's all for today. I promised you 10,000 great power skull for the new century, so there we go. I think this was a cool, pretty cool episode. Uh, Mink should be right now dying, in the, and in the next ones, we'll be having to focus on killing Prussia finally, annexing those three vassals that we started annexing, I think farther into Africa, getting into Indonesia, into Japan, and Central Asia because Central Asia is pretty much untouched but with our income with our resources it shouldn't be a problem so for today thank you so much for watching if you like this series I hope you enjoy it please leave a like and comment it and of course if you don't subscribe yet because I know a lot of you are not subscribing subscribe right now because you'll be getting notified about the new episodes and I will see you soon